Welcome to Crucial Conversations. I'm your host, KD, and I'm here with my co-host. Motor Mouth. Motor Mouth, how are you today? I'm fine. I'm fine. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. You got to pick yourself up. You look like you're ready to drop over there. <laughs> like you done had a hard night. It's what been a rough on? evening. It's been a rough evening. But my morning has gotten better because we have a special guest. Yes, yes, yes. Well, let our special guest introduce herself. Um, well, I'm Imani Ma'at, Dr. Imani Ma'at, and it is a pleasure to be here with you all today. I'm a health educator, health scientist, and worked at the Centers for Disease Control. Oops, am I allowed to say that? Yeah, I yeah, did. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I worked at CDC for <laughs> <clears throat> 22 years. Um, and I worked in wow. HIV prevention programs. I worked oh, in okay. chronic diseases. Oh, in fact, I... That's you today. That's oh, impressive. thank you. Uh, thank you. So tell me uh, exactly how did you get started into the line of work? I mean, your schooling, your background? Uh, um, well, I went to a, a chain of Ivy League schools. Mm -hmm. I don't need to say the names of them. Smart. But I liked I liked school. It was fun. So you was a bookworm. I Smart. kind of. I was I, I was it. the class nerd in high school. But I had fun because I was still a cheerleader and I was in the band and so I got to hang out right. with the cool people even though I was in the A plus classes. Right. But um I I um I actually my first dream was to work on city health and city social issues, problems, okay. and community mm -hmm. issues. So I, I got a master's in city planning mm -hmm. from okay. MIT. Uh -huh. And um, MIT? Mm -hmm. got a little good. school up in Massachusetts. You got <laughs> <laughs> you uh, wow, that's okay. impressive. That's well, impressive. I didn't stop there. And yeah. so I, I um, but that was good. But while I was there, I worked mainly on, on health, mm -hmm. on um, educational yeah. um planning issues mm -hmm. and I actually did a, a review of alternative schools designed to um, support African-American children while okay. I was there and so while I was there doing that research I found myself at the Harvard Ed School Library most of the time so I just stayed around for another year and got another master's from them. Okay. Why am I not surprised um, Motor <laughs> I don't <laughs> It just, That's nice, it just I made love it. sense. I love it it, it just made sense. And, I love you know, it the only thing that didn't make sense is that I hate the cold. And there okay, I am yeah, in Massachusetts yeah. for like I'm most of my. North, so I know what you mean by that cold. I hated it. I cried through every winter, and I said, Ooh. "When I grow up, I'm moving south," which is okay. probably why I live in Atlanta today. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, um, my first job out of out of. That right, program, that. Yeah. At that program at Harvard was working in a substance abuse clinic in wow. New York City, okay. and I did that for about a year, mm -hmm. learned a lot, but I didn't really like it, right. <laughs> so I moved on, okay. but after about maybe a year later, year and a half later, the person I worked with was running... Had had developed these okay. HIV prevention programs. I, I got a question to ask you about. Mm -hmm. You know, talking about substance abuse uh, prevention in New York. I always wonder, the New York State, which one had the worst condition, New York or Newark, New Jersey? Hmm. Um, I don't know. I think they were probably neck and neck. Okay, they, they, they were probably. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, they they yeah, were. I always uh, wonder about that. You they know? were both pretty pretty bad. Okay. Um, but I just the whole concept of, of method on maintenance was, was something that didn't sit right with me because mm -hmm. I, I yeah. found that we were substituting one drug for another well, drug and that's and I just it just didn't work for me. As mm -hmm. much as I knew people had good hearts and they wanted to help folks on the streets and mm -hmm. make changes in people's lives. I just, mm -hmm. you know, I thought there was a another way to do yeah. that. Pharmaceutical yeah. company was taking the, mm -hmm. the people on the streets. Well yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. So I so anyway, the person I worked with in that environment invited me to come back and run a street outreach HIV prevention program, mm -hmm. which I liked a lot better because we were educating people, you know, active substance right. abusers. My mm -hmm. whole staff were people in recovery, mm -hmm. you know, so I mm -hmm. really got an education and learned a lot and um, mm -hmm. and enjoyed that. And I, you know, and as the AIDS epidemic was was growing around us. Right. You know, okay. it, it leaps and bounds in New York. 
I, I still had this thing in my head that I hated the cold and wanted right. to move south. <laughs> so in my naivete, I called up the Centers for Disease Control and said, can I, can I speak to the head of the AIDS program? <laughs> and they put me through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, how fast can you get here? Because CDC was at the point of looking at the spread of HIV among African Americans among right. substance abusers, yeah. you know, and the whole package among right. Hispanics. Uh, I, okay, I got a question to ask you. I don't know if you can <laughs> answer this or not. I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. You know how they, you know, they do, you know, different type of experiments and different things. Mm -hmm. Is Atlanta a testing ground? Oh no, I knew he was going to go there. <laughs> I don't know. You know, because I, I mean, know. we had a conversation. Uh, KD and I had a conversation. We had a show uh, mm -hmm. based around. Right. Have you heard about the um, the highest? Well, they claim it one of the highest um, HIV records going on right now, as far as population, is in Atlanta with really? black women. Uh -huh. mm. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was well, I know it's still a problem, but yeah. I, you know, I, 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 next question. We gonna we gonna okay, we gonna, we'll pass that we gonna yeah. skip over yeah. that one because yeah. yeah, I mean, because I mean, you know, this is just a big issue. You know, for here for black people mm -hmm. in, in the city. You know, just curious. You know? It's yeah. still a major issue. You yeah. know, and and um, you know, that's one of the things that that led me to my work with youth is mm -hmm. that. I said, you know, we can we can continue working with adults and trying to, because I'm a behavioral scientist, and, okay. and we can continue to try to change behaviors of adults, mm -hmm. or we can go downstream or upstream, upstream, know you know, right, but yeah. they're throwing yeah. the babies into right, the water, yeah. you know, and they're coming yeah, downstream. Right. We can go upstream and really make a difference. If mm -hmm. we teach young people and really give them a, a healthy sense of, self-esteem, self-confidence, belief in themselves, help them to get on their purpose in life, mm -hmm. then we don't have to worry about changing behaviors of adults, yeah. you know, and that yeah. thought has always been an underlying... Be adults and yeah. have good practice. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Like prevention. Right. 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 I mean, real like prevention. Real prevention, right. Right. Real right. prevention right. means yeah. educating and, 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 and preventing the bad behaviors and stuff from even happening. Right. Right. Well, that makes a lot of sense because if not... Uh, just looking at the ideal that if they're in a house or in an environment, this is all that they're getting, and they're not getting mm -hmm. no type of support on the ground root level. Right. They're just going right. to continue that bad praxis and don't know nothing else. Mm -hmm. you know? so, mm -hmm. Right. Right. And it's so, the norm for them. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so two things that are important in this story is that mm -hmm. throughout my life, I've been writing poetry and just sort of shoving it in the corner or just, you know, as things <laughs> occur or I'm in certain circumstances, I would write poetry about it because mm -hmm. that would help for me to kind of um, digest what I was seeing or witnessing or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, times I was in South Africa, there's a beautiful poem that I wrote about this woman mm -hmm. that I saw outside of an AIDS clinic. Mm -hmm. But hey, dude, we gotta put it on the spot. What's that? We do. Yeah, you got to <laughs> recite one of your poems for us. Oh well, I, I I'll she's tell you, good. I'll tell you the one that I was about to describe to you. But I will, I'm about the follow up to the story about the lady in South Africa. This I've is a this is a Africa. poem about the lady in South Africa right. on a gurney outside of an AIDS clinic. Wow. Uh -huh. I just need on a to. Gurney? Well, because the clinic, you know, probably the waiting room probably comfortably held about. 20, 30 people, and there were about 150 people in there. Wow. It was about 100 degrees, and um, wow. there was no room. And she was very, very frail and very, very weak, and she was laying on this gurney outside the clinic in the sun. Wow. And, um, you know, my heart just went out to her. I was with a group of people. We were looking at HIV and TB clinics mm -hmm. throughout mm -hmm. South Africa. Mm -hmm. And... Um, wow. I just you know this this uh, we were we were staying at a hotel and across from the hotel was a a cemetery and we left early in the morning every morning to go out and visit these clinics and came back in the evening and there were always more grave sites right. from when we had okay. left in the morning wow. okay wow. and one of the clinics that we went to had had signs up about one stop shopping you know, it's like get everything there. <laughs> you know, everything that you need. So no, it's all in it's all in the poem. So this this helps to explain some of the things, some of the imagery in the poem. Okay. But anyway, this is called Tears for My Sister. 
And there was there was a time I could not get through this poem without. I can imagine. Yeah, right. so I'm I'm okay if now. I've been there. I, I, yeah, I yeah. yeah. But anyway, it's called Tears from My Sister. She had no face. She had no name. Her arms like sticks. Her legs the same. I felt her pain, though probably long gone. I felt the stain of a country war torn. AIDS and TB in South Africa. Epidemic proportions for real. Hasn't anyone told them that these preventable diseases no one should still feel? The cemetery across from our hotel expands in proportion to the growing epidemic. Outside the clinic, a sign reads, One Stop Funeral Shopping. How convenient. Had only the treatment for AIDS and TB been as convenient, had only the doctors been plentiful, and the natural herb of South Africa, Sutherlandia, not been pirated and sold to countries other than the one from which it originated. The babies cry, the mommies and daddies die, the grandmothers try to take on the weight. Aunties also do what they can to keep nieces and nephews alive. How I wanted to reach out to her and give her some hope, yet her spirit was already somewhere else. Her joy was gone, her hope was gone, her pain was gone. She just was. Too weak to stand, too weak to hurt, too weak to cry, too weak to die. In my heart, I hope that she has passed on, as that is no way to live. That's nice. And, 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 I mean, I could feel you, you know, I mean, your actual experience, you know. That yeah. had to be something really to witness, you know. Yeah, it I was. Like you know, that's a serious battleground. That's nice. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. and in nice. so many ways, mm -hmm. you know, politically, we met with, um, there was a, a natural healer, Dr. Crate. well, I call him Dr. Mm -hmm. Baba Credo Mutua. Okay. I don't know if you've heard of him, but he's a, he's a, um, he's a traditional healer. He's a, just a phenomenal, phenomenal person, and I've had a chance to, to sit at his knees twice in South Africa and just let him tell his story about mm -hmm. the work that they had done in South Africa. And, and he talked with us about the herb Sutherlandia right. and okay. how they had discovered that it had properties to help people, you know, not What's necessarily Sutherlandia. Okay. And it not necessarily to, to heal, but it helped so many people in terms of the symptoms of HIV and AIDS. And maybe it did heal. Who, you know, who am I to say that it didn't? Right. But mm -hmm. he talked about the attack on his family. Um, one of his, I think his wife had been um, operated on and they intentionally left something inside of her, an instrument, and it right. killed her. Okay. Um, we, I think he talked about his son being murdered because they were having so much success yes. in terms of working with people with HIV and specifically with that herb. He talked about how it was pirated from them mm -hmm. and taken to other countries in um, in Asia and Southern Asia to wondering. help people there right. with HIV now, and AIDS. Did they make it like illegal herb. for them to use it? Because I know in some of the indigenous country, mm -hmm. uh, there, there was a uh, a big lawsuit going on from the way they have come in and took their medicine or their herbs. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if they made that particular one illegal, but, you know, they took it, you mm -hmm. know, so they took it out. They, they didn't manufacture it in South Africa right. to help South African mm -hmm. people. It was more profitable for them to sell it for millions of dollars right. to, to people with money in mm. other countries right. so yeah, I, I know I'm like, like yeah, speaking about that you know uh like what you're saying the yeah. pharmaceutical companies and everything um the cyberry is is a good example of that how they have made it they outlawed it where the people oh i say i say okay okay and uh they outlawed it where they could not what? use it no longer mm. and they had in world court they was trying to sue the pharmaceutical company from like the united states over in mm -hmm. europe and everything mm coming in there and patenting what and they've patenting. been doing for centuries. Mm -hmm. right. uh -huh. Yeah, it's, it's just a shame what, what happens to poor people globally. Mm -hmm. right. You know, it's like those with money and those right. with resources, you know, they, they take. They right. take and take and take to the, oh, yeah. to the detriment, mm -hmm. you know, of indigenous people and, and people who discover something like an herb that, that, um, that works um, effectively. Yeah. 
you know, mm-hmm. on HIV and AIDS. I, I had, on a previous trip to that in South Africa, had a chance to meet with some other traditional healers and mm-hmm. it's just amazing, you know, what they did. I mean, they they would throw these bones and they would know by how the bones felt, whether how they laid, whether how they landed, mm-hmm. whether someone had HIV or not. Yeah. You know, okay. and it's like there was were no they, question. I mean, this this was their science. Wow. You know, and there was uh-huh. there was no question to it. And since right. then, I've met medical doctors wow. from the U.S. who've gone and been trained right. okay. by them and who work with the traditional healers because. You know, who are we to go into an area and say that people don't know exactly. right. what they're doing? Mm-hmm. And, and, right. and you have the masses who rely on these traditional healers mm-hmm. for everything. I know, you I've know? been to a couple of my days sometimes, a couple of jafaris, mm-hmm. and they have been fascinating, you know. Amazing. Medicine, you mm-hmm. know, what they can do. What they do with right. the plants. I mean, they're botanists, you know, they're, mm-hmm. herb, they're herbalists, botanists, and they know exactly how to live with nature, how to use nature to heal okay. everything. And there's nothing new under the sun. Right. That's you true. know. Okay. Well, I got a question to ask you, you know, speaking of about South Africa. Um, I'm, I was just curious. Um, now, is the doggone tribe from South Africa, or part of South Africa? Or are I you familiar say, with the say I want to say they're from, from West Africa, but don't quote me on that because okay. I don't know. But you know about But them. I know about the dog on Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Share a little bit about that, you know, their history, you know, because also, like you were saying, science. Okay, you know. But, yeah, I like guess say what they do, you know, the science and everything, mm-hmm, you know, and mm-hmm. everything. But getting back to the point of uh, something that you said earlier that was interesting, mm-hmm. you said talked about the children because, KD and I also work with, you know, youth. You know. Okay, so let me I tell you a little bit about Yes for Health. Okay. And how yeah. that well, was. Yeah, like, I'm talking yeah, about I, I, that. I, but I still like to have her back. I would love to hear more about South Africa. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I would then yeah. I would love to share it because uh-huh. it has. And meanwhile, what are you doing now? I mean, what's so you even doing? while I was at CDC, right. you know, and I had this this passion to work with youth and uh-huh. to to go upstream, you know, like I said, um, I I was really interested in that. I had seen how theater had been used to educate young people about HIV and AIDS and other things. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, I think that's what I want to be when I grow up. I want to have a theater program. I want to have kids performing and dancing on pianos and, you know, telling stories about about Uh health issues, including HIV, that will empower themselves as health educators and also empower the the, the other children who are listening to them, to their audiences. Mm-hmm. And um, I was introduced to a brother, Mr. Gary Ogden, who was born on the same day as me, okay. two days, two years earlier. But we both had the same dream of starting a teen theater program. So we did. Yes right. for health. And oh, he's he's a, he's a brilliant attorney. We got our 501c3 on one try. Wow. Okay. <laughs> he just so filled out the right. he filled out the paperwork. He we got it bean. and it mm-hmm. and we we did a major production on uh, and there's a lot more to that sir, but we did a major production on diabetes mm-hmm. called Drive Through Justice, which okay. is like our signature play. We still get asked for that play to this day. Yeah, okay. Um had a lot of really good it's all educational, but there's comedy in it, there's music, there's dancing, there's a funeral scene because one of the main characters dies of di- complications of diabetes. Okay. Um, so powerful, like you're, powerful. You're teaching about, through entertainment. Absolutely. Right. I like Edu- it. Edutainment. I like it. And we're not the first ones to edu- like edutainment. It. We're not the first ones to use that, though. There's a like group it. called Me Productions in, out of Philadelphia that's been used in that. They're really, really good at, at what they do. But we, um, so we we did HIV, we did the diabetes play, we did a wonderful HIV production, mm-hmm. had one student who created a, a dance, you know, depicting um, a young girl who found out that her boyfriend in high school was HIV positive, and, okay. but it's all educational about how we... Sounds exciting. Yeah, yeah, so... We, um, we've had probably over 300 youth that have come through Yes for Health, whether okay. they stayed for a week or a month or a semester or a year. The problem with us is that we've always gotten 
the cream of the crop students who are doing 10 other things. Exactly. They're in all the sports music, programs, music, right. they're in music, they're in this, they're in that, they're with their Everything. churches. Right. So, you know, we're like begging for them to make us a priority. Mm -hmm. But in spite of that, we've, we've had yeah. some really good successes. We've had, we've mm -hmm. had kids move on. We had one that was in a, an episode of... Um, a Tyler Perry show. Okay. We had we have one young man who graduate. He's he's uh he's about fourteen, and I think he's a junior at Morehouse College okay. right now. Yeah. He was he was he was uh, he was yeah. brilliant before he came to us, mm -hmm. but he I've I've heard him speak about Yes for Health and how it helped to give him voice. Right. And right. how he was real quiet and shy right. before mm -hmm. he got with us, and we made him get up on stage. <laughs> Open and him up. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Exactly. We've had kids get into college just because we wrote recommendations based on the growth that we saw in them. Exactly. You know, right. we, we took youth to the, um, to the next level. The, yeah, to the yeah. next level. But exactly. I was going to say specifically, we, we took a group of youth to Anguilla in the um, British West Indies okay. on a health study oh, tour a couple summers cool. ago. Yeah, I remember that. I was supposed to do the video production. That's when I met right. you. That's yeah. right. That's uh, right. I remember that one. That's too. right. Never yeah. too late. Wow. It's not yeah. too late. See, I it's not it. too late. <laughs> no, but we, yeah. we um, so That's we've. awesome. I like the program. Yeah. We've had, you know, we've done a lot of volunteer work in the community, Meals on Wheels type programs, like volunteer that. things, because we wanted um, the young people, we wanted to instill a sense of community and giving back and helping out mm -hmm. and being connected. To, well, to I the whole. Like yeah, that. well, I know you're tight on your time, and we got to ask you back. But before you leave, share a little bit about this bullying initiative that you got going on. Exactly what you plan on doing with that inside, mm -hmm. you know, Atlanta market that might be mm -hmm. able to be shared. You say you're going to mm -hmm. take that across the Nationwide. country? Nationwide, okay. probably international by the time we get finished, because I have okay. friends around the globe at right. this point. But we, well, first of all, the, the, the second phase of Yes for Health that was started, that we started, is called the Healthy Haiku Series. Mm -hmm. And I've written two books. One is, one is a mentoring program, a mentoring training that teaches mentors how to teach healthy haiku. Haiku is an ancient form of Japanese poetry. It uses mm -hmm. 17 syllables to tell a story very concisely. And we use it to, to talk about health issues. Um, here's one off the top of my head mm -hmm. um, about two friends who get into a dispute, mm -hmm. you know, and when he pulled back his fist, mm -hmm. he stared at the lifeless face of his best friend, you know, and that's, uh, that was 17 sil syllables, believe right. it or oh, not. But, it had a major impact. Uh, right. Yeah, oh, you yeah. think yeah. about it, and I remember after writing that, Maybe two or three months later, I saw that same story on the 6 o'clock news mm -hmm. about two kids who got in, you know, they were best friends, and right. the guy hit him in the temple, and that was it, mm -hmm. you know. So, but we, we teach through this series. We do workshops. We go out to schools and churches and so forth to teach about health issues, full curriculum mm -hmm. with HIV, mm -hmm. substance abuse, um, alcoholism, violence, mm -hmm. um, mental health issues. But all of it is is about self esteem and building okay. self esteem. Right. So this is nice. Yeah, what the, we're the youth of today really need that. Yeah, I, I know yeah. you have mm -hmm. something about obesity because I'm thinking obesity, about obesity, nutrition, her, her absolutely. Obesity program. Thank you for for yeah. mentioning yeah. that. This that is, is important. Nice. Yeah. And Sex so education is in here. Everything: smoking, drinking, drug use, building self esteem. This is all of nice. that. Thank very you. Nice. Thank you so much. And so very we're. Nice. You know, the next level of the Healthy Haiku workshops, we're looking at doing what we're calling um, power clubs okay. in schools around, the, around Atlanta and around the country mm -hmm. with, the, with the point of, again, building self-esteem mm -hmm. and really doing away with bullying. I mean, okay. it's, it's a lofty right. goal, yeah. but if we have kids engaged, nice. if we have kids engaged in something positive and it's the club that's getting all of the attention, right. you know, we got celebrities coming in to, exactly. to encourage them and, and to and talk to them, them. Yeah, and right. to motivate them. We have them performing. We have them getting scholarships and, you know, all kind of fun things. The bullies are going to want to be part of the club, too. Right. Exactly. He's like, we, we, we want to be part of that, too, <laughs> as right. opposed to, you know, kids joining bully clubs just to um, just to be right. protected. Exactly. Right. You know, that's exactly. kind of like reverse psychology. Absolutely. Because, you know, yeah. Absolutely. Because one of the things of bullying, 
uh, like an emotional bullying mm -hmm. is the idea of how groups of children that get together and then uh, alienate one of the, you know, the child right. is bullying. Yeah, right. right. You know, so, right. Yeah, so that, we, that's, that's it, really right. Nice. The, the concept is taking, is taking the, the nerds, right. you know, and making them the in crowd, mm -hmm. you know, and making right. people want to be friends they with them really suffer from emotional bullying right right yeah. there's a lot of that going on there's cyber bullying yeah. mm -hmm. you know which is taking place on the computers and texting and right. the phone and all of that mm -hmm. so there's so many different forms in oh, addition yeah. to being punched and and yeah. kicked on yeah, and physical yeah right. the physical right. stuff right. so and, and, and one of the biggest thing is verbal Right, right, right. Even yeah, a, lot a lot of, of parents bullies. is guilty of that just right. from the way they speak to their children. Sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can break my heart. Yeah. You know, they really do. They really do. So mm -hmm. we're going to be addressing all of that. We're so excited, and we're going to use a, a internet radio platform mm -hmm. to basically chronicle the development mm -hmm. of these um, of the power clubs, the Yes Power Light Clubs. It. So we're, we're, you know, this is a new phase for us. We're very, very excited. We look forward to coming back and speaking with you again, maybe bringing some of the youth with well, I us. I look forward to having you back because <laughs> this, especially with the idea that you're going to take this on a um, national level, I really like this program, and it's needed. Oh, absolutely. And along the line of bullying, there's so much that's going on now. Um, like, the well, I don't want to say the recent thing is, but the most popular thing that I've noticed in the media lately has been people that have been bullied because of their sexuality. Absolutely. Which we know absolutely. is another problem. We have so many problems yeah. right yeah. now with children. It's really yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, no. A lot of kids have actually been committing suicide. Oh, I know. Been being bullied. I know. Cyber bullied, bullied in school. It's just really out of control. All of this that stuff. So it, it, yeah. it is so right. needed, and we, we yeah. want to... We want to get a lot of attention. We want mm -hmm. the media to yeah. be to be on this. We want celebrities to be on this. You know, we want to be that magnet that pulls everyone in that wants to do something good. Mm -hmm. This well, is a phenomenal mm -hmm. opportunity to do it something is. good. Well, I know we feel blessed that you're going to be part of the DNA family. You well, know, good. So Thank you. Know, We're to put the plug in there. Exactly. You get your <laughs> because again. she's coming Finally, back. Yeah, she's coming back <laughs> on our show, Crucial Conversation. <laughs> But okay. plus, she's also going to hold her own show on the DNA Media Communication on the network. All so, right. Yeah, we're looking All forward right. to it. So y'all are going to have a real treat there. Yeah, well, we're I'm so excited. I'm going to get the word out right. because this is an awesome program. Thank it's you really, so it's much. Really yeah. Thank and, you, and Katie. We really appreciate you coming in, stopping the day. I know Thanks. you didn't have no idea of doing the interview. Or you know, I didn't, but I've, I've, I've had to put you on the spot. I've, you I've learned to, to yeah. be prepared even when I'm not prepared. But thank you so much well, for this. I look forward to it. We appreciate right. you. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Well, well, if you guys have any questions or comments or suggestions for, for our special guest, Dr. Imani, my tea. Am I saying your last name right? No. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> my aunt. My aunt. <laughs> my aunt. You were close. I think I had MIT in my mind. I was still stuck on MIT, MIT and my aunt just kind of <laughs> blended together. That that was a good. That was a good save. I call her okay. Doctor e, Imani. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. But anyway, anyway we see. appreciate you stopping by, and we will have you back. I'd love to okay. have you back. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. I look forward to it. Exactly. I do look okay. forward to it. Thanks so much. And uh, we'll be back after these messages. Talk to you soon. Peace and grace. Yeah,